Welcome to the Dice Tower, a video cast about board games and the people who play them. This episode is a special episode covering the events of Origins 2009, a game convention in Columbus, Ohio. Join Tom Vassell and Eric Summerer as they take you on a tour of five great days of gaming. All right, well, welcome back to our special report on Origins 2009 from the Dice Tower. Uh, as you can see from this picture, this is the open gaming area in the very beginning of Wednesday. There's nobody there, but it's a gigantic room nonetheless. However, most of us who like board games really like to play them in the boardroom. And so you can see here, uh, up the stairs to the boardroom, in the very early morning, there are still quite a few people playing games, or at least a few people, I suppose, playing games. This is the outside of the boardroom. This is the inside, and you can see there's plenty of space here to play games. No one's here set up yet, but there's still plenty of room at all these tables, and this place will be really cranking in just about eight hours later, and there's one game already set up. This is one of the really neat things about Origins, is the fact that you'll see games like this. This is World Domination. It's a gigantic game. He was, uh, he was using a projector, uh, two tables to play this game, just an immense, huge game, and yet if you want to play games like this, or at least you want to try them out, then Origins is the place to come to, and there was a few of these throughout the game day. But also, you see, people started playing the smaller games. Race for the Galaxy was in full bloom. Uh, this was Joe's first uh, game of it. I got to play this new game here called Robo Tori, which is a small abstract game in which players are trying to get pawns onto their side of the board uh, using cubes and placing them. It's, it's pretty simple, but I liked it enough that I'm going to seek out a copy. It's a pretty interesting little game, and I'm glad Brad Keen brought it and I was able to try it out. And, of course, war games are starting up. This is Combat Commander, and I saw this being played at several places around the boardroom during the day. Here we see the registration line. Uh, this is around uh, 10 or 10.30 in the morning. And there's people coming in and out, a lot of different people coming and going. And I met several people who are fans of the Dice Tower. Well, it was a lot of fun. But got to go back to where the games are. So I went up back to the boardroom. Here we are around 10 o'clock or 10.30. And we're already seeing more people playing games. This is in the boardroom again itself. You can see they're setting up the area where they'll be handing out games. It's still pretty empty, but time is going to change as the day goes by. And more and more people are starting to come up and play games. Downstairs was something very interesting. Uh, these Battletech pods were downstairs where you could get inside and play against your friends in a fully functional battle mech. Well, I mean, obviously not a real one. And this was very interesting, so I decided to talk to the guy who ran this. Uh, what we have here is uh, Battletech Firestorm. Uh, these are 12 of the Virtual World Entertainment uh, Battletech VR cockpits. Uh, each cockpit allows the uh, player to uh, select their own mech and enter into the uh, battlefield to compete up uh, against up to 11 other uh, friends or competitors. Uh, you get to run a 7 minute mission. You've got over uh, 100 fully functional controls. Um, and then uh, and if you die or if you get taken out, you always get to come back within that 7 minutes. And it's all about uh, technical superiority. You want to get in the game, take out the other guys, get the most points. And as it is with combat, you know, he with the most kills wins. Uh, how does it work? Is it like a what does the winner get anything, or do you do like do you keep track of points? Um, um, after your experience, um, first off, I'll take a step back. This will be edited later. Uh, during your game, there's a live feed of the game in progress, which will show kind of the ESPN of what's going on in the game, as well as the current stats, points, kills, and real-time damage. After the game, you get a printout on the far side that gives you the full uh, statistics of how your game went, went against all of your other competitors and your competitors against you, against you as well as a uh, breakdown of exactly how that mission went minute by minute. There are uh, no particular prizes other than the uh, joy of making your opponent squeal. Now, I'm not a huge video gamer, uh, but this is interesting enough that I may give this a try out later on. Uh, you pay $6 for seven minutes, which seems a bit expensive, but he said that it's really going to get packed out, and as the day went by, I could see more and more people playing it. I mean, it looks simple and fun, 
and something that I really would have enjoyed playing uh, 10 years ago and even now. I mean, a lot of people are interested in this and I fully expect this to be one of the big hits of the show. Of course, you might be here to see board games, so let's go into the exhibition hall. Here's Jay Tumbleson and Todd setting up for the Rio Grande booth. And as I went throughout, uh, I saw all over the place different people setting up uh, different booths, games coming in. The exhibition hall is not open on Wednesdays. Everyone's getting ready for the big opening on Thursday. And so I just went around to all the different publishers, got in their way, and just went to see uh, the different games that they had set up all over the hall. Went around and looked at other places. Here's the art show room. And as you can see, there's really no art in this room at this point in time. But there will be more here later on. And so, again, Wednesday is more of a setup day, although there is still a lot of gaming. Later on in the afternoon, when I came through, you can see the registration lines are picking up. If you pre-register at Origins, it's so much easier to get in because the registration line, this is the registration line area, is much longer and you could wait there for a while to go through it. Uh, but the pre-registration lines seem to move fairly quickly. And so uh, uh, several hundred people at the convention at this point. Back up in the boardroom, they got their library in, which is pretty good. And you can see all the games in their library. There's over a thousand games uh, that you could play. And a lot of people were coming up and playing games. And so we had a, I went back up and for much of Wednesday, I just sat around playing games. This is one of the neat parts. Jay Tumbleson donated thousands of games, good quality games. And if you bought a boardroom ribbon, you got one of these for free. Mine was the Three Commandments. Well, let's tune in part two to find out what else happened Wednesday. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. 